Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Sweet Art Crafts. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys another method on how to make a mug at home using the pinch pot method. This was the method that I was using when I first got back into pottery last year and it requires less tools and is a little bit easier than the slab method. If you guys haven't checked out my tutorial on how to make a mug using the slab method, make sure to click the i card above to watch that tutorial. After this mug is dried, fired, glazed, and fired again, this is how the mug is going to basically turn out. For this tutorial, it is going to be for these bigger mugs. I'm going to also make sure that I leave suggestions for the weight and the measurements for a smaller mug, but just be aware that this is for a big mug like this. I hope you guys all find this tutorial helpful, and now we're going to get into the supplies you're going to need for this mug. To get started, I'm going to cut a slab of clay using a wire cutter and then I'm going to break it into smaller pieces and weigh it on a scale. I usually like my mugs to be around 600 grams, but if you're wanting a smaller mug, I suggest 475 to 525 grams. Now I'm going to start compressing the clay before I start wedging it. I like to use the ram's head method to wedge my clay and the reason why it's called the ram's head method is because the clay starts to look a bit like a ram's head like you see here. I'm going to leave some informative tutorials in the description box about wedging since I'm not the best at explaining the process. Once I'm finished wedging the clay, I'm going to start rolling it and smacking it so that I can compress the clay down into a small cylinder. I'm also going to be tapping it onto the table to further compress it. Using my thumb, I'm going to stick it down the middle of the block of clay. Then I'm going to start basically pinching at it to move the clay around and widen the opening. I'm also going to be using my thumb to smooth out the pinches that are made. I'll be continuing this process until I get it to my desired width and height for the mug. I also do tap the mug onto the table a bit just to even out the bottom. Using a measuring tape, I'm going to measure out the width of the mug to make sure it's where I want it to be. And then I'm going to start working on the height and I'm going to be smoothing out the bottom a bit because there is a lot of clay at the bottom and you want to make sure that everything is very nice and even. Then I'm going to take my measuring tape again and I'm going to check if it's at the height that I want it to be. This is how the mug is starting to look like and I'm going to start working on the lip of the mug by basically tapping it on the table to make sure that it's even and then I'm going to be removing that excess clay on the inside using a metal rib. I'm going to be turning the mug while I use the metal rib to scrape off the excess clay at the lip of the mug so that we can make it thinner. Now I'm going to be using the metal rib to smooth the lip again before repeating the same process to remove the clay. You want to make sure that the thickness of the lip is around a quarter of an inch. You don't want it to be super thick because it's going to make it harder for you to drink from and if it's too thin it might be prone to cracks. Now I'm going to be using a wet sponge to smooth everything out. The bottom of pinch pot mugs tend to have more clay than the rest of the mug so I'm going to be using a metal rib to remove some of that clay while simultaneously shaping the bottom of the mug and smoothing it out. Okay. 
I'm also going to flip over the mug and use the metal rib again just to smooth out the top portion of the mug because I want to make sure that it's the same thickness all around and you're going to see here that I'm just checking to make sure that I can feel that it's about the same thickness throughout the whole mug. Using a damp sponge, I'm going to dampen the mug in preparation for me using a rubber rib to further smooth out the pinch pot mug. I like to put emphasis on making my mugs very smooth now so that I do not have to sand them later because sanding pottery can be hazardous if you're not careful. I switched over to using my banding wheel to turn around the mug because it makes it easier for me to stabilize it as I'm smoothing it out and it helps me make my mug more even throughout. I also feel like it helps me make my mugs a bit faster so I recommend every potter that's hand building to get one but I wanted to show you guys that you can still make a mug without it. So I did feel like the lip of my mug was still a bit too thick so I'm just doing the same process that I explained earlier to make it a bit thinner. So this is how the base of the mug should look like and I'm going to let it dry for a few hours because I like to add my handles when it's stiffened up a bit. After 3 hours I'm going to get started on the handle. This clay was already wedged so now I'm going to compress it a bit before shaping it into a log so that I can start rolling it out onto the table. I'm mainly using the palms of my hands to roll it out so that my fingers don't imprint onto it. Then I'm going to use a damp sponge and I'm going to lightly dampen the handle so that I can roll it out a bit easier. When I do start using my fingers to roll out the handle, I basically roll it off my fingertips and use light pressure if that makes sense. Now I'm going to be measuring out the length that I want my handle to be. Typically I like them to be about 6 inches and I'm going to be using a fettling knife to cut it. To smooth out the handle a bit, I'm going to be using a damp sponge and then I'm going to shape the handle. I typically like to keep my handles pretty simple. Before I attach the handle, I'm just going to let it sit for about 20 minutes so it can stiffen up. In the meantime, I'm going to be using this clay rasp so that I could basically shave off the top of the mug in certain areas where I felt like it was a little bit uneven. You can use a needle tool to cut off the whole entire top area to make it completely even, but for me, I always have trouble getting it perfect, so I just like doing this method instead. And then I'm going to take my clay stamp and I'm going to stamp on my logo on the bottom of the mug. You can use a needle tool to write your name at the bottom of the mug if you don't have a clay stamp. I did make this one for myself, but I have seen some that you can order on Etsy. So it's been about 20 minutes and the handle is a bit stiffer and now I'm going to be using a fettling knife to cut off a bit of an angle off the handle because I felt like it sit a bit better on the mug when that was cut off as you guys can see here. I only did that to the top portion of the handle but now I'm going to start mixing up my slip which is just a mixture of water and dry clay and usually I like my slip to be a bit thick but for my handles when I'm attaching them I like them to be I like it to be a bit thinner so I just put some of it into a little cup and I put some water in it until I got this consistency here. Now I'm just going to try to figure out where I want to place the handle and then I'm going to be using a needle tool to mark where I'm going to place it and then I'll be using a serrated metal rib to score at the area that I'm going to be adding the handle. Scoring is essentially making scratches on the surface of the clay that you want to attach something to and it allows the slip to seep into them so that when you're joining the pieces together they're able to stick and join and become one piece. The slip essentially acts like a glue for the clay.
When you're attaching the handle, you want to make sure that you're pressing firmly so that the two pieces can stick together. I like to use a good amount of slip so that I have excess at the base of the handle. I do this because I'm going to let it dry for the next hour and I want the slip to seep into those scratches and stiffen up on the outside so that we can further join the handle and the cup together instead of adding a coil. I do plan on showing you guys the coil method as well. After about an hour, you guys can see that the slip dried up a bit and then I'm going to be using a cuticle stick to move around that clay so that I can join the handle and the cup portion together and they can become one seamless piece. The reason why I like to use this method instead of the coil method is because I've just been having issues where the coil has been causing cracks and it just hasn't been working for me. But if this method doesn't work for you guys, the coil method might be a better option for you. I'm going to lightly wet my fingertips so that I can smooth out the base of the handle and make sure that the two pieces are nice and joined together. You don't want to be too rough because you can pop off the handle and that has happened to me a few times before. Lastly, I'm going to take a damp sponge just to further smooth out the handle. If my previous method did not work for you, then the coil method might be a better option. When you score and add slip to the handle, you want to make sure that you don't use too much slip because you're going to be adding the coil to the base of the handle instead. So I'm going to roll out a thin coil and then cut it into two and then I'll be adding it to the base of the handle. Your handle won't look as nice and clean when adding the coils because this is just me showing you the coil method on the mug that I just made. I'm going to let the coil sit on the mug for about 10 minutes so that they can stiffen up. Make sure that you press at the coils so that they're nice and attached to the mug and the handle and there's no gaping. After about 10 minutes, the coils have stiffened up a bit and I'm going to be using a cuticle stick to move around the clay. This is essentially the same process that I did with the other method. It's just gonna be the same where I'm just moving around the clay making sure that the mug and the handle are nice and attached. And then I'm going to be using some water on my fingertips to smooth it out and make sure everything is nice and joined. And then I'll be using a damp sponge to further smooth everything out. Now that the handle is nice and attached, we're going to get into smoothing out the entire mug and making sure that it's very smooth so that we don't have to sand it later on. After smoothing out the mug, I'm just going to be using my fingers to shape the top of it. And this is how the mug turned out. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below and I'll see you guys in my next video.